Hey, I'm Caleb from Caleb's Aviation, and today we're in Atlanta, Georgia at the Delta Flight Museum, checking out their very first Boeing 767. But before we get to that, it's time for some history. Originally known as the Boeing 7X7, this aircraft would take its first flight on September 26 of 1982. It soon entered into service with United Airlines from O'Hare to Denver on September 8, 1982. But Delta was not far behind. They got their first 767 on December 15th of 1982, and it entered service from Atlanta to Tampa later that day. This 767 took its final farewell tour in 2006 and entered the Delta Flight Museum on May 7th of that year. However, this did not mark the end for the program, as the 767 would go on to and even be the first to be ETOP certified. Its closest competitors were the Airbus A300 and MD-11. It would go on to crush them both. So, in the same year, the comparably sized Boeing 7N7, the narrow-body version that would later become the 757, was also built and went into service later that year. The 757 and 767, although having major size differences, shared a common type rating in the cockpit. It took its first flight with Eastern Airlines on January 1st of 1983. By the way, don't miss my video flying on the 757-300. It was really interesting, and I'll put a link up above. Nowadays, Delta's remaining 767s mostly fly on long-haul routes like JFK to Atlanta or LAX on high-density premium travel routes. That's enough history. It was soon time to explore this 767. Oh yeah! Models are great and all, but I care for the real thing. In spring of 1982, the airline industry was troubled by a weak economy, high fuel prices, and deregulation. After 35 consecutively profitable years, Delta posted net loss. As a way of expressing their appreciation for the company, support during this trying time, Delta employs spearheaded Project 767 to raise money to pay for Delta's first Boeing 767. I've never flown on a 767, so maybe someday I'll do that. Led by three flight attendants, the project was an inspiring effort to raise $30 million through the combined donations of employees, retirees, and friends. Here's the top of that beautiful Boeing 767. It's a pretty good view, pretty high up. Hey, while we're up here and looking at this 767, this is your reminder to subscribe. So make sure you're subscribed, turn on the notifications, keep an eye out for that sort of stuff. Let's head on that jet bridge and check out the 767. Walking down this jet bridge, I was just amazed by the size and scale of this airplane and it first flew in the 1980s. It would have been quite a surprise to the people that used to pretty small planes. On boarding the plane, we find ourselves in Delta's 1980s first class cabin. These seats were huge and so much bigger than the first class seats on planes today. This is the place to be on a 767. It's even got the little recline features. Oh yeah. That's it. That's the ticket. But if you know me, you know I fly on a fair amount of airplanes and make trip report reviews about them. Next up was Delta's retro 1980s economy class cabin. It looked pretty good as well. A lot bigger than the seats on, say, Frontier Airlines. And then here's more about this 767. There were so many different exhibits and nostalgic items on board this plane, I don't have time to get into all of them. The plane was even seen wearing this Atlanta 1996 Olympic Games livery, a pretty cool one, and this Delta 75 years livery. In 2029, Delta becomes 100 years old. Moving right along, there was even a model of the General Electric CF6 turbofans used on this 767, and a model of a Delta 747 for some reason. No idea why.
There were also several vintage exhibits from Northwest Orient Airlines, which later became Northwest, flying to Asia. There is even this pretty awesome model of the Atlanta International Airport. Really, really cool. And I am such a sucker for airplane models, including that 777. I miss the Delta 777. There was also some memorabilia from Song, Delta's failed budget airline. Leave a comment if you remember Song or if you've flown them. I'd love to hear that story. Northwest Airlines. Song. There was even a model of the Boeing 2707 in Delta colors. Boeing's attempt at a supersonic aircraft that never went into production. <laughs> Located at the back of this 767 was the galley, and this tiny window on the very back exit door. But soon we headed back through the front of the airplane to check out the cockpit. 767-200. Also, while filming this video, I met some friends who were with me on this entire video and the 747 and full guided tour of the museum video. This is a very popular museum, and the 767 exhibit was very busy today, so sorry about the limited film access up here. Checking out the cockpit, it was clear this was a 1980s cockpit, with all the buttons and gauges, and even the flight engineer over there to the right. Nowadays, it would be very difficult to find a flight engineer on any modern airliner, especially flying today. Later 767s like the 300 and 400 removed the flight engineer going to be it for this video on the 767. I hope you really enjoyed, and this is also my final video at the Delta Flight Museum, so make sure you check out the other two if you haven't. I'll leave links up above. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, turn on that notification bell to all, leave me a comment, tell me what you liked about it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, until next time, wishing all 767s blue skies and tailwinds.